YouTube. This is Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here with a, uh, well, it's kind of a multifaceted video. Uh, is that a thing? But anyway, uh, what I'm going to be doing today is actually talking about how to uh, mic drums with limited audio channels. Um, I'm going to be using, <clears throat> well, I have a few different things set up here, but generally what I want to do is have my drums set up to where I can record uh, pretty much any time I want, not have to change too much. But recently I rearranged some things. I got these Tama uh, Techstar pads, if you saw the video about those. And so my drum set is kind of rearranged in here. And as well as I want to put a new, oops. I want to put a new uh, batter, or not batter, a uh, resonant head on my kick drum. Uh, because this one is like, as you can see, it's got a big hole directly in the center. And the reason, I want to, the reason why I want to do something like that is right now I'm actually using uh, a uh, resonant head with no hole. And the no hole actually sounds really good in the room. And, uh, but the problem with that is I can't really mic the front of the bass drum head uh, because it just sounds too boomy and not very uh, much attack that way. So I've been miking the batter head, which is better, but it's still uh, not quite the sound that I want. So I'm gonna try this out and see if I can do a, a close mic like deep inside the kick. I'm only using an 18 inch kick drum, so it's pretty small. So like I said, this is a multifaceted video, uh, but I'm gonna be installing that first. And then what I'm gonna be doing is working on uh, doing some different miking setups and having it set up because I only have four audio channels. I keep looking at the wrong spot for the camera. I'm using my phone, sorry. I only have four audio channels on my interface. <clears throat> and I've done other tutorials where I talk about chaining multiple interfaces, which I can do, but I don't really want to do that. Um, I want to stick to just the four. And uh, the reason why for that is I have uh, Ableton Live intro that I don't always use. I use Linux a lot of the time, but I do use Ableton Live Intro sometimes, and I like it, but it's limited to only four audio channels at once. So if I have this set up good and it sounds good with the four audio channels, I prefer to do that. Plus when I do live streaming and YouTube, it's a lot easier to deal with with just four channels rather than um, a bunch of strung to together interfaces and stuff like that. So I'm gonna get started first by changing out this bass drum head and finally putting some decorations up on these walls because I've been here for like a year and still haven't done that. But I brought some stuff finally and I'm gonna do that. And then I'll be back to talk about some of these miking and cables that I'm gonna be using and how I'm doing it. So before I pretty much had the bass drum pretty wide open except for uh, two felt strips on the batter as well as the resonant side. But I'm not gonna use the felt strip and instead I'm gonna put this pair of Fila sweatpants inside the bass drum. And uh, this, that should be enough muffling. I don't want it to be too dead, but it is, <laughs> this space in here is ridiculous. There's like, or lack of space, it's so funny. But so I'm gonna go ahead and throw those in there. I'll see how this works. Now I have to crawl back out of this little hole and get that other head. Now I love Aquarian heads, but you think they could have made their logo any bigger on this thing? Jeez. <laughs> All right, so I have everything hooked up. And uh, let me just run through, I'll give you the rundown here. Let me back away a little bit. Uh, this is basically the clown car equivalent <laughs> of a drum room. Uh, I have more stuff crammed into here than I think is humanly possible. Uh, it, it just really is amazing how much stuff, I mean, I am literally standing at the edge of the room right now. And uh, you can see that it is just packed uh, from end to end, but it all fits, so <laughs> it works. Uh, so anyway, here's what I have. I could barely even get the camera over here for you guys to see, but I got my, uh, I can't even get under there anymore, but you can see the, a little bit, you can see the, the new kick drum head, the Aquarian uh, front ported head with the big hole right in the center. The reason why I wanted that, I don't know if I mentioned this, is because it's basically like ha not having any, uh, front head at all in a way because all the all the air just pushes right out and i wanted a very uh you know that type of sound i was looking for so i, I went with one of those of course i could have just taken the head off completely but i don't want to do that uh, i'd rather have that on there so i have my ev or not ev my cad kb12 i think is what it is on the kick and then on my snare i've got my uh, audio technica atm 650 
And then the toms, I have my HiMu uh, big tom mics. And then the overhead. Now, see, I'm just using a single overhead right now. Let me adjust that a little bit. And the reason why I just went with a single overhead, and I'll uh, show you all this here in a second, is, um, well, like I was talking about before, I have four channels to deal with or to work with. And so I have my two Tom mics and my Tama Techstar uh, triggers with the audio output from the module right there. They're running to this little mixer right there. And then they're going into channel four on the uh, Behringer uh, UMC 404 HD. And so I have my toms and my uh, pads, my trigger pads, all bust to the same channel. And I have a single overhead just going down to channel three, and then I have kick and snare on channels one and two. Now the reason why I decided to do it like this was because even though it's not really the best or the most ideal to have a mono overhead, um, I still think it'll sound pretty good in such a small room. And plus having a kick, snare, and overhead all on separate channels, that will give me the most options in uh, post-production uh, mixing. The only challenge with this is going to be getting the levels uh, just perfect between the toms and the trigger pads. But I don't think that'll be as hard as... Like, the other way I thought about doing this was taking the toms and the trigger pads and the overheads and mixing them all in stereo and using two overheads all through the, the mini mixer there and going into channels three and four on the interface. But that would have been a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have been able to adjust uh, post, uh, you know, recording. So I think it's going to be a little bit better like this because I do like having control over my overhead afterwards. Uh, which is always good. And I can always double the overhead and EQ the, the different sides, you know, basically split it and then EQ them differently to create a stereo effect, which I do quite often in other recordings. Um, so I think it'll work like this. Now I just need to uh, turn all this stuff on and uh, hook up my laptop and start trying to get some levels and see how this sounds. So I'll work with that now and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, I think I got a pretty good level. For everything so i'm just going to go ahead and record some drums and then afterwards we can go back to my place and we'll work on the mix okay so here i am back at home and i have my uh, reaper project loaded in here and as you can see it's a pretty uh, standard setup here i have kick drum in number one snare drum in number two overhead is in number three and toms and pads are in number four. Um, I haven't done any real mixing yet. All I did was just change a couple of the levels down here uh, just so some things weren't uh, overbearingly loud. But uh, okay, so let's just play back a little bit as is uh, before I change anything so you guys can hear how it sounds. Okay, so really not bad, uh, even like that, but, uh, you know, it could be better. So it's a little bit kind of plain sounding. Um, it, everything is mono. Obviously, I have everything panned dead center. So we'll want to work on that a little bit, as well as if we look at my um, overhead uh, channel here, you can see this waveform is a bit... Uh, it's got some, what this is called is DC offset. So there's more, you know, going on the top uh, than on the bottom. So one uh, thing you could do here, um, a lot of, you know, there's certain uh, programs that have like a plugin where you can process it, but uh, Reaper just has something called DC filter. Uh, so we could just put that on there and that'll take care of that. Uh, it won't change the way it looks, but it's going to handle that problem uh, when we do the rendering. Um, so just put that on there. It's not really going to do much as far as uh, a sound difference when we're playing it back. Uh, but when you go to mix, it's not going to make any uh, waveform uh, kind of hinder the mix as far as uh, being able to get the levels uh, the correct way and all of that. So good idea to do something like that when you're uh, mixing. 
So, okay, so another trick that I like to do, since I talked about I only did a mono uh, overhead, single overhead, what I'm going to do now is right-click on the overhead, and I'm going to go to Duplicate Tracks, or Duplicate Tracks, rather. Okay, and now what we can do is let's rename this one to overhead copy oops and i'm going to pan these to left and right now at first this really isn't going to sound any different but what you can do here to kind of trick the ear into thinking that there are more than one overhead mic is first zoom in really far let's make sure snap is turned off so let's turn off snap and now i'm just going to drag this copy over just a little bit and now let's play back a little bit let's zoom back out okay so now we have uh, a more stereo sounding recording already and another thing we can do too what i like to do is actually if you eq the two overheads differently so first let's go Actually, let's just solo the uh, overheads first off so we can hear how they just sound without anything else. Okay, and now let's go into our second one here, our second overhead. Let's add an EQ plugin. And I like the, my favorite one, it's just the re EQ or real e or whatever this is, you know, the one that comes with Reaper, Reaper EQ. And uh, this one is really great. It's very simple, but it's parametric and kind of graphic too, so it's easy to use. And uh, what I'm going to do is, well, let's play it back. Give this one a little bit of a mid range boost. About there or so. If you double click here, we can create another point. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a high boost too. 20k boost. Just a little bit, not too much. All right, so let's stop that. Now let's hear those in the actual mix. And now what that will do is since I'll let it play a little bit more here in a second, but since we EQ'd it slightly different, um, it's going to enhance that stereo effect because certain symbols will, will have higher frequencies, you know, in certain frequency ranges than others. Like for example, on my right, I had a 16 inch crash, which is a higher, it has higher frequencies than, than the one on my left, uh, which actually it might've helped if I, what I may do, let me do this. I'm going to, Take that mid-range boost out of that right, the copy, and I'm going to put it in this one because the crash on my uh, left has quite a bit more mid-range to it. So I'm going to kind of exaggerate that a little bit here and go a little bit lower. And so now this is going to bring out, that EQ will bring out that crash on the left and that EQ will bring out the crash on the right. So if I go down a little bit, play it. Okay, so that sounded like, yeah. It's definitely making the, the left crash appear more to the left. Uh, the right one, not quite as much, but I could probably bring up that, maybe if I bring the high boost a little bit more. Let's play that now. That's the left crash that I just hit. And there's the right crash, so yeah. Definitely give it, I'm hearing more of a stereo image now for sure. Okay, well I'm happy with that as far as the overheads go. Now I may wanna do, um, if I were mixing this in a song, I might want to create another channel and do like a compressor, but well, I might, might as well do that. So let's go ahead and do that right now. 
I'm going to add a channel. I'm going to go into track right here and then insert new track. You could also press control T and I want to drag. Actually, I'll leave it right there where it is after the, the two overheads. And I'm just going to call this one overhead bus. And now if I go to routing on overhead bus, I'm going to go here and go to add new receive. And I'm going to do overhead. And then add another receive again. I'm going to do overhead copy. And now overhead, I'm going to pan that all the way left. And overhead copy, I'm going to pan that all the way right. So it matches the pan settings with those. And now what I can do is go to effects. And let's find a compressor. And there's a lot of compressors in here, these VSTs, uh, the LSP uh, compressors that I haven't actually tried yet. So I have no idea how these are going to work, but I'm going to go ahead and try one. So I'm going to do this compressor stereo, and uh, it looks really nice, but let's go ahead and play. Now that's going to bring up my overhead overall level, so I'm going to bring down these two. So the one thing that's a little bit strange, though, about these LSP compressors, they don't seem to have a threshold setting, um, which maybe there's one hidden here somewhere, but I haven't been able to find it. Uh, but you can kind of get the same uh, effect or the same concept by using just the preamp. So we can just boost the preamp a bit. And now if we watch our level right here, we can see where the compression starts to take effect. <laughs> boost it even more let's turn up my look ahead a little bit okay I'm hearing some phasing issues there okay I'm not going to use this one because I'm hearing some weirdness so let's go ahead back here let's go to I really wish uh, the LV2s and LADSPAs worked with uh, the Linux version of Reaper, but they do not, as far as I know yet. Maybe they do, and I just don't know how to use them. But I don't think they do. <clears throat> but uh, there's other ones in here I can try. So I'm going to try this uh, stereo compressor limiter, the fairly childish. <laughs> Let's try this one. See this, I'm not even really familiar with how to use this one. So let's not do that one either. Express bus compressor, there we go. Threshold. I'm gonna do a soft knee. Okay, so I'm liking this one. Let's turn it down a little bit, though. All right, so that one sounds pretty good to me. Let me save it. Let's rewind again and play back. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to check out were this, was the kick drum because that's where I did the changes on the kit. And uh, I can tell already that I like this much better than how it was sounding before. So that's the kick drum sound. And yeah, it's got way more attack uh, than it had before. Let's go in here to effects. I'm going to 
I'm not even sure if I need to put any EQ on there. But what I might want to do is put a limiter. So let's try this peak limiter. And this can, a limiter on the kick drum can also help bring out uh, the presence a bit. Because you can pump it a little bit higher. This is the snare. And I'm pretty happy with the snare just as is really i really like that atm 650 microphone i think it sounds great now the one thing though now of course a lot of this would change if i were actually mixing with music because you're going to want to uh you know make it sound good within the music itself but you know just as a drum sound uh this sounds pretty good and you know uh, you know, there's a, definitely something to work with here. Now, the other thing, though, that I wanted to show you guys is if we look at our, not the overhead, the toms and pads channel, or if we listen, we solo that and just listen to it. There is quite a bit, as you can hear, a kind of tom resonance bleed going on. And I'll play that again. And part of that actually comes from, well, one, it comes from the, the toms themselves, but also really what it is is uh, because I am using uh, microphone clips that clip on the toms themselves, that can cause that. And uh, I really don't have an option, unfortunately, to not use those in my studio because it's so small, um, or I would just set up regular mic stands, but... Having the clip-on uh, tom mics makes it much easier to not have to deal with all those stands because I, I really can't fit anything else in there. I mean, you guys saw how tiny it is. So in order to deal with this, there's a couple of things that I could do. Now, when I'm really serious about mixing a song and want to get like the drum sounds absolutely perfect, and I have done this, believe it or not, I will go in and actually cut out all of the spots of the toms where I'm not playing and like just literally highlight them and chop them out of there and then do volume fades every time, you know, so it's smooth every time they come in. Now, the shortcut around this is you can use something called a gate. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do here. And it works mostly the same way. Uh, you have a little bit less control over it than you do if you're using, you know, the other technique, like manually going in and cutting everything out. Uh, but this will work. Oh, I don't know if I wanna use it. Well, we'll give this one a shot. Let's see how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it back. Actually not bad, uh, it's got a little bit. I'm gonna have to turn my threshold down a little bit, or up actually. The trick is finding the spot, you know, where uh, it's only picking up the toms and the pads. Come on, play the toms. There we go. Okay, so I think the attack should be faster. And that is how fast the gate opens up. 
And I think the release should be a little slower. So that's what I'm doing here. And that's actually pretty good. You know, a little bit comes through, but it's a lot less background noise going on uh, than how it was before without using it at all. So let me unsolo it so you can hear how it sounds in the mix. Pretty good, actually. Sounds pretty natural. Now, another thing that you could do and that I have done in the past is actually gone in and programmed automation for panning of toms. If they're on one channel, then you could go in and, you know, and every, it's just very time consuming, but I could go in and pan all the, the rack tom hits to the left and all the floor tom hits to the right and just do panning. And it is doable. It just depends on how much time you want to take uh, working on that kind of thing. So you can make it sound very much like it was recorded with multiple microphones if you just have the patience and uh, the will to go in and do all this man all this automation and panning and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that here uh, because I really don't care. <laughs> like, for me, it's fine to have the toms pan dead center. It doesn't bother me. As long as I have some kind of stereo imaging going on, and I think it's fine with the overheads. And another thing that you can do too, and what I probably would do, is go back here and let's let's solo my snare again. And on the snare, we can put some kind of room effect or delay that has a stereo uh, effect to it. Oh, okay. So I can use this MDA uh, pseudo stereo plugin on the snare. I rewind back to the beginning. And this one is pretty cool. It's kind of does a similar thing that I did to the overheads. And as you can hear there, the snare already sounds a little bit wider. And here's your adjustment. These two adjustments kind of uh, do the most uh, as far as the stereo imaging goes. And then the balance, you can balance it left and right there. Output, obviously, is volume. Let's hear how that sounds in the mix. too much I think that sounds pretty good okay so that is just some Little tricks you can do if you have limited channels uh, available or limited inputs available when you're recording drums. And uh, yeah, I think they came out pretty good. You know, like I said, if it were in a song, you may want to change some of that and uh, just kind of EQ uh, to work well with the song. But as far as just regular drum sound goes, um, I'm pretty happy with those. Now, I have a very specific type of sound that I like on drums, and not everybody watching this video may like that. But, you know, use what you like and you you know eq to your tastes and tune to your tastes and all of that and uh but i think some of these tips might still apply like as far as the stereo imaging and how you can bust certain things and the choices you need to make uh when it comes to combining uh certain drums onto one channel uh, i think I, this was the right choice for me uh, just putting the toms and the electronic pads all on one channel and then everything else gets a separate channel so that way I have a lot more flexibility and, uh, you know, EQ options and things like that. If I wanted a lot less overheads, I could, you know, if I took out the overheads completely, it would sound like this. So it's a very dry sound. If I go back and put in the overheads. Anyway, you get the idea. 
Anyway, uh, hopefully you found this educational and helpful. If you did, uh, let me know. Click thumbs up and like. And if you want to help me out, you can always go to my Patreon account, which is just patreon.com slash demonic sweaters, and uh, contribute any amount there. Uh, will help me out quite a bit. You'll get some free stuff if you do that. And uh, be sure to subscribe and click like, and I'll see you guys really soon.